Hey guys, it's Abby and today I'm going to do a get ready with me. I already have my brows on because I don't have any. And it's like the one thing I'm very self-conscious about so I just slapped them on my face. I'll probably have to redo them because, you know, makeup. But we are going to do our makeup and talk a little bit and just, you know, hang out and talk. Because why not, you know? I keep saying you know. Is that a new thing? I used to say so or but, now I'm saying you know. Um, I did ask you guys, oh actually, I told you guys I was going to do a get ready with me and I posted it on my Instagram as well as my YouTube community. Is it a community post? I don't know, but in my community area and I asked if you guys wanted me to talk about anything or if you had any questions and I'm gonna go check and see what you guys wrote if you did write anything so that we have like a little topic to talk about. So there, yeah, there's a few things in here. There's, there's something about my pets and um, She Crafty asked me, <laughs> She Crafty said, what are you planning on doing with all these tadpoles now that you became a tadpole dealer? <laughs> oh my gosh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna link She Crafty's channel in my description box. I love her, I think she's great. So I think you guys will love her too. Anyway, I'm going to talk to you guys just about stuff and life and pets and animals and all sorts of stuff. First, we're going to put my base on. So I'm going to use, I don't know which one I wanna use yet. I, I moisturized my face already, but I didn't put my primer on. And I'm not sure which one I wanna use. I have the Farsali Skin Tune Blur, or I have the Olay Henriksen Banana Bright Face Primer that I got in my Boxy Charm Premium. So I was thinking maybe I'll try this because I haven't used it and why not, you know? Um, I have a few new products here from boxes that I've either tried or I haven't tried, but I wanted to, you know, use them with you guys on camera. And now we're gonna try this primer, this one, the Olay Henriksen Banana Primer. I'm really, really interested to see what this is gonna look like. I don't really know what I'm gonna do for my eye look yet. I think I'm gonna do a purple eye look because a lot of you guys have asked me how I do my purple eye look, but I haven't made a decision yet at all on what I'm gonna do. Okay, so let's put this on and be quiet. <laughs> okay, so I was, I've been asked about my animals. So I've asked how many animals do I have um, and I have, so I have one rabbit. His name is Oscar. He's a black little rabbit. I'll put a picture of him up. And we adopted him just this past year from PetSmart. Actually, when I walked into PetSmart, they were like, Abby, we have the, we have an animal for you to look at. They knew I was going to take him home. Um, and so they showed me Oscar and I literally adopted him within five minutes. Um, so we have Oscar and it's very different having a bunny. He's a free roaming bunny. So he just like hops around the house during the day. And then we have a pen for him at night in my daughter Scarlett's room. And, um, he is in there. It's a nice roomy pen so that he can like still jump around, but he isn't like out all night long. Cause we do have to watch him cause he likes to eat wires. And then we have three cats. We have one tuxedo cat. Her name is Oko. She's gray and white and she is the love of my life. She sleeps with me every night on my pillow or next to my pillow and I just love her. She's a really great cat. She's pretty timid. She used to be very, very timid, but she is um, getting a lot better. And then we have Scribble and Scribble is an orange tabby cat and he's big and fat and just adorable and we love him He is one of those cats that like demands love if he wants to be pet and he wants to be loved on He will lay on you on your face on your stomach He will wake you up by suffocating you like he will demand that love and then we have Masha and Masha we um, got from my sister Amanda and she her, one of her cats had a litter and Masha was from that litter and Masha's like one of those kittens or those cats that has never I'm putting primer on the back of my hands. I always do. It's just a habit um, It's one of those cats that has never grown She's still like a tiny little cat and she looks like a kitten like a forever kitten. So my kids love that um, So she is Masha's three Scribble is nine and Oko is eight I believe those are the ages, maybe seven. And um, 
So those are my pets, Oscar and the cats. And then we also have a chameleon. She is a female panther chameleon and her name is Camille. Very original, I know. She is um, not one of those chameleons that changes colors, like bright, beautiful colors. And she, since she is a female panther chameleon, she is kind of peachy, pinky peachy. She does get darker or lighter depending on like her mood or what she's near, but she doesn't change colors and she's very small. She is probably, her body's probably the size of this. Um, and we've only had her for a little over a year. My husband found her crossing the street in a city near us and brought her home and we tried to find her owners. We called around, put up signs, like went onto Facebook, lost and found stuff, called up humane societies and pounds and all sorts of places and nobody claimed her. So we've had her here for a while. It's very different having a chameleon as well. They have no expression at all whatsoever. You never know if they're happy, but she seems to be doing fine. And then we, okay, let, let me get my foundation. Today I'm gonna mix these two. I have the Color Stay. Revlon, I love this foundation. This is my go-to foundation. I wear this all the time. It's my go-to. And when I had a tan, my tan is going away, um, I would use this, but this is gonna be a little bit dark for me. And then I have the Juvia's Place I Am Magic Velvety Found Matte Foundation. This is very thick and very full coverage. This is one of those foundations that I like to use in the winter, but because I have both of them, I figured I'd mix them together. Maybe I'll get my skin, like the match for my skin. Um, so we're gonna use these two. So. Um, in the beginning of the summer, I found a bunch of tadpoles in my, oh, and this is the e.l.f. sponge, makeup sponge. I love this. It doesn't suck up a lot of product and it's just a really, really great makeup sponge. So in the summer, right before the summer, in the spring, um, I went to go clean out my pool because we, for some reason, didn't cover our pool. I don't know why we didn't, we didn't. And when I went to go it's a little light, but we'll make it work. When I went to go cover, um, to clean out my pool to get it set up for the summer, I saw a little tiny fish like swimming around in it. I was like, what are those? And it ended up being a bunch of tree frog tadpoles. We know they're tree frog tadpoles because we had a bunch of tree frogs on our actual window. Um, so we knew that they were tree frog tadpoles. They had a bunch of eggs. They laid a bunch of eggs in our pool and I didn't feel I didn't feel like okay just letting them like throwing them out to the grass so I bought some baby pools and I set them up and made like a little ponds for them and we had hundreds of baby tree frogs and they grew up and it was all some they were with us all summer and we watched them metamorphosis it was amazing my kids enjoyed it it was just great when they first started coming out as baby frogs they had like these long little tails and it was just the coolest thing to watch. So once they started grow, once they started growing up, they left. They hopped off into their own little world. Um, but we always have tree frogs, like in the sleeves of our pool, um, and they're just hanging out there. So about three weeks ago, I noticed in one of the frog little ponds that I made, I saw like these weird brown and black specks. And I was like, what are they? So I looked it up and it ended up being more tree frog eggs. And I didn't realize that they laid eggs in, at the end of the summer. Like I started worrying, like what, what's gonna happen when it gets cold out? You know, I live in New Jersey, it's gonna get cold. But you know, there's nothing I can do. So I knew that we were gonna have a bunch of new tree frog tadpoles. There was probably about, I don't know, a hundred eggs. So then within days, maybe two days, they became little tiny tadpoles. They went from egg to tadpole. Well, this weekend, I woke up and my husband had been outside and he comes inside and he sees me awake and he goes, you have a bucket full of tadpoles. And I'm like, what are you talking about? He's like, you have a bucket full of tadpoles. So I get up and I get up and I go outside where my husband was. And sure enough, in one of these big Home Depot buckets that we have, my husband uses them for work. We had rain, we had like a bunch of rain that went came through and my husband didn't empty it. And sure enough, 
inside this bucket and I mean I'm gonna put pictures of this because it's like so hard to explain inside this bucket were so many tadpoles that the bo the bottom of the bucket was all black it's an orange bucket I'm like is that all tadpoles sure enough there were hundreds if not six seven hundred tree frog tadpoles in this bucket so I pulled out another baby pool and I emptied them into another baby pool. So now I have baby pools full of tree frog tadpoles by the hundreds and um, we're gonna watch them grow. I am worried, I am a little bit worried about how they're gonna fare as the weather gets colder. But I mean, if they couldn't, if they couldn't live through the cold weather, I don't think they would be, a, be laid, right? I don't know, so yeah. We have a ton of tadpoles. All right, now I remember why I don't use the Juvia's Place foundation very often because it is so thick. I haven't worn a full face of, like I haven't worn a heavy full face of foundation in quite a while and that's probably why I forgot about it because um, it's the summer and wearing this foundation is literally just going to I'm gonna sweat it off okay so for concealer I have the born this way concealer in from my boxy charm my boxy my regular base box this is the multi-use sculpting concealer and this is in the shade pearl and this has a this is a bit yellow but I do like brightening up my under eyes with banana powder so I'm gonna see how this is um, and I also have the Tarte Creaseless Concealer. So I have two of them and we're gonna see how they work. I'm just going to dot it right here and I put one right here and then one here, one here, very light. And then three little dots there, a little bit here and then some here. I don't know how thick it is yet. I don't know how it's gonna blend out so I don't wanna put on too much. Plus I have such a thick foundation base that I'm a little scared. Um, okay, so the next question is, um, suggestions for someone who's thinking of starting a YouTube channel. Um, if you're starting a YouTube channel, just start it. I start When I started my channel, I was sitting on my living room floor and I propped my phone up on, I think, I don't remember what I propped it up on, a speaker? And I just talked. I just talked and showed what I wanted to show. And I slowly but surely started my, ch like started buying like lights and a new camera, but it took me a while to just get a right setup. I only used natural lighting for a while. And um, I just started. So just start, make sure you're yourself. Don't change who you are as a person for your audience because your audience, you want your audience to like, like you for who you are and just do what you love to do. Be you, do what you love to do, and don't give up. If you really want to start a channel, don't give up. That's all I can say. It's just, having a channel is hard. You're always going to get people that are going to, you're going to get people that are going to say like, why do you do this? Why do you do that? Why do you care what people think? Why is your hair like that? Why does your, why do your eyebrows look like that? You're going to get people that are just gonna be nosy and ask everything about you and you're gonna have people that are gonna judge you. It just comes with it. A lot of people say like when you see a negative comment and then um, somebody says like, well, you're a YouTuber, you're pu you put yourself out there, so you have to, you need a thick skin. I think that's wrong. I think that just because you put yourself out there it doesn't give the right for people to tear you down, but it does happen. You're gonna be, tear you're gonna be torn down no matter what because that's just the way it works. People are mean. But if you really want to do this and you really want to have a channel, just do it. Just do it and enjoy it. And you're going to have your good days. You're going to have your bad days. You're going to have days where you're just going to want to quit. But if you really enjoy it and it's something you want to do, you won't quit. You'll just keep doing it. You can take a break, but you'll keep doing it. If you have a phone and you have a room that's quiet, you can have a channel. All right. Um... Are the girls doing homeschooling? If so, how are you handling it? I'm struggling over here with, with three doing it. Kinder, fifth, and seventh. You know what? I don't know what's happening with our kids' school year. I have no idea. We had to do a survey, and the survey was like talking about homeschooling and like virtual learning and all this stuff. 
So we had to do that, but then we didn't hear anything. And then we got another email that says we're going to be doing virtual learning until October 13th, but they keep pushing it back like over and over again. So I don't really know what's going to happen. I do know for virtual learning, we're doing it until October 13th. Other than that, I don't know anything. I'm going to use the Too Faced banana powder. I really, really love this stuff. Oh, I did have someone, let me go on here real quick. I did have someone on my community post, Caitlin McNamara, which I had a friend named, last name with McNamara. Um, they asked, how do you apply your banana powder? What tools do you use and how long do you let it sit? Okay, so banana powder. I like the Too Faced banana powder. This one right here, it's actually banana cream. It looks like this, has actual little bananas. And then I also really like the Beauty Bakery yellow setting powder. So this one's very fine, very, very fine. And what I like to do is I like to just dip my, I like to use one of these brushes. This one is the Luxie 640 Pro Precision Tapered Brush. And I like to dip this in very, very, very lightly. So it kind of just, it sort of coats the brush, but not really. Um, and then I go like this. So I pat it on like this, and then I sweep it. And I like to put it all over my eyes, not just not just underneath, I like to do it all over. So I'll do it again if I needed more because I only put on a very little bit. And then I pat it up here and then I sweep. Just like that. Now I don't know if it really makes a big difference, to be honest. I just use it because I like the way that my under eyes look bright, like when they're bright underneath. And then again, I'll pat it up here and then sweep. Just like a this. And that's what I do. And then sometimes if I feel like I need to put some in the middle like that, I'll do that or put some here. But I use such a little bit of the banana powder that you really can't tell that you have any kind of powder on your face. Um, I have, so that's my set, that's all I do for banana powder. If I'm done, like if I do my base and I feel like I still need to brighten it up, I'll go back in and brighten it up. But I usually use a little bit of banana powder on this brush after I, like when I'm doing my eyeshadow and if I have to sweep away the product, I'll actually put a little bit of that powder on this brush again and sweep it that way. So that way it doesn't look like I am, like I have a dark cast from any powder. Um, I don't know if that works, but that's what I do. So for setting powder, I'm gonna try the Too Faced Born This Way Ethereal Setting Powder in Translucent. And I also have the Ciate London Watermelon Burst Setting Powder. I really like this. I've, there was mixed reviews on my, my Ipsy video when I got this. Some people said they didn't like it and some people said they did. I really, really like this. It's very, very, very light. It's a very light powder. You, can, you can't even see it, it's translucent. But it doesn't cake my face like some powders do. A lot of setting powders that are loose like this cake my face and I hate them. I hate the way it looks, I feel like I look old. So I'm gonna try, I'm gonna try the Too Faced powder, but if I don't like it, I'll go to the Ciate London one. I'm just gonna pat underneath my eyes because I feel like it's creasing a little bit. The um, the concealer that I used, I feel like it started to crease. All right, so let's try this. I'm going to use, for setting powder, I'm gonna use this. This is the Baddington brush. We got this in a boxy charm. I like to use pointed brushes like this because I like to get in between my brows. So I'm just taking some of the powder and then putting it in the lid like this and then tapping it off. So let's go. I'm gonna put some here because I have an oily T-zone. So I like to just set my makeup right here and here. And then I will set by my nose right here and my nose. And that's really all I do for setting powder. Now, sometimes I will, sometimes I'll take it and I'll go up here and set some of there because I, I like, like to move my hair around a lot. And um, I feel like if I have setting powder up there, maybe it won't come off, but you know, it probably will. Okay, so now that I've set my face, cause that's all I'm gonna do. Um, I'm, 
I don't really have a say on this powder yet. I mean, it doesn't look cakey or anything. Looks fine. Um, now we're going to real quick, just, just a little bit because I hate when my face looks washed out. I'm going to take just a little bit of bronzer and just warm my face up a little bit. So I'm going to actually use the Nomad Kiss of Sun Bronze and Contour Powder. I, I'm going to use the same brush that I use for setting powder. I haven't tried this yet. I got this in an Ipsy. I love Nomad eyeshadows. So I figured let's try this. Oh, it's very powdery. So tap that off and it's very warm. Like it's a super, super warm, like look how warm that is. So I'm going to just start right here and just lightly tap it in because if it's super dark, you want to just lightly do it. I'm going to do a purple eye look and I'm not sure what I'm actually going to do yet because I just don't know. Um, I think I'm gonna do a mix of these two palettes. I have the ColourPop Blush Crush Palette, and that's right here. And I have the Bye Bye Birdie ColourPop Palette, and that is a mess, and it's right here. I really, really like this palette a lot. So I think I'm gonna start with this, but no, I'm gonna start with this first. I'm gonna use the shade Love Sick, and that's this. I'm gonna put that all over my lid. So I just need a very fluffy brush. So I gotta find it, let me find one. Very, very, very fluffy brush, just for all over the lid. Okay, so we're gonna use the, I don't know what this is. It's a taper blending, and I don't know who the um, person is, but we're gonna take some of that lovesick shadow and just place it all over the lid so i have a base now yes i didn't put any primer on my lid but i have primer for the face and i have setting powder and concealer and foundation i just feel like if i was to put any more on my face it would look i mean on my eyes the eyeshadow would probably peel off now is that true will that truly happen i don't know but that's how I feel. All right, let's go back to another question. I will say with having the kids home so much this summer and not doing very much because I didn't want my kids to be around anybody, we've definitely spent more time together and it's been really, really nice. I like, I've gotten a lot, not that I wasn't close to my kids before, but our relationship is a lot closer and we definitely talk a lot more than we did be like before. So I do like that. So now that I have this as a base shade all over my lid, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna use the same brush and I'm gonna go in with the Bye Bye Birdie palette. I'm gonna go with the shade nesting and that's right here it's just a next it's a deeper shade up than that shade make any sense okay so let me just find another question someone said i think we'd love to meet your hubby he should step in for a quick minute he's got to be great to have won our abby's heart okay so about my husband being on my channel my husband doesn't, my husband's fine with me having a channel. He's very cool with it. At first, when I started my channel, he didn't really take it seriously because I am the type of person that starts something and never finishes it. I've always been like that. So like I'll start a project and I won't finish that project. I will start writing a book. I've been saying I've been wanting to write a book and I do write. I just never finish. Um, and I've always been that way. I've never been the type to finish something. So when I started YouTube, he didn't think I was gonna actually go through with it. He's a very, very private person, and so am I, I'm pretty private, but he's a lot more private and he just doesn't like being on camera. But now that I have continued to be on my channel, continue to make a little bit of a, like just like a little job for myself he's all about it he's very he likes it he's he's very supportive he doesn't have a problem with it but he doesn't want to be on camera and I don't ever want to put someone in the situation where they feel like they have to be I, I do the same thing with my kids if my kids wanted to be on camera and they wanted to be in a video with me then I would you know I would think about it and see if I wanted to actually put them on camera but they're old enough to say, I don't want to be on camera and I don't want to ever make my kids feel like they have to be 
they have to do something they don't want to do. And the same thing with my husband. I wouldn't want to put him in an awkward position. So that's why he hasn't been on my channel. Okay, so now that I have that down, see how it's just like a really nice light wash of color? It's not like super purple and it's not super pink. So I use that as like another base shade so that when I do put on the other shade, it like a deeper shade, I have this shade on the like peeking out. Mental health check-in. Hopefully you're doing well, we all love you. Well, I hope you guys are all doing well and I hope everyone is you know, doing okay during this weird time we're in because it is a very weird time. It's very hard to be comfortable in life right now, to be honest, because you don't really know what's gonna happen. I feel like every day is a different day. This is one of the Wet n Wild blenders. This was a Christmas or holiday set. I feel, I feel like life changes every day. You never know what's gonna happen. Okay, so I'm gonna go in with the shade Boo Bird right here, just one step deeper than the one I just used. Um, so anyway, I feel like we never know what is going to happen next. You don't know if things are gonna open, you don't know if things are gonna close. And it's just a really hard way to live your life because you just don't know what the next step is in anything. When this all started happening, I was freaked out, guys. I. I was so freaked out. I was scared. I remember like going to the store and like feeling like I had to go like fill my house up with tons of food. And on my way to the store, I was like praying. I was like, please let my kids be okay. Please don't let them get sick. Like I was really, really scared. Now I'm so used to what's going on that it's like, I don't, I'm, I'm still don't want my kids getting sick. And I still feel the same way, but that fear isn't necessarily as strong as it was. Maybe it was because it was the summer and I could control where my kids were going and what they were doing and who they were seeing. Um, maybe that's why I felt better. But now that school is starting and it's going to start opening up and kids might be around each other, that's a whole different ball game. And I'm a little nervous about what's going to happen. Um, and if school does open, how they're going to keep the kids healthy. But other than that, I've been feeling a lot better. I had a really hard day yesterday. Yesterday was the date that my sister Heidi passed away. So August is always really hard, but especially the end of August. And I honestly said to my husband last night, I was like, I'm getting in the shower and then I'm going to bed because I just want this day to be over. And it's because I still feel, it's so hard because she passed away so long ago, but to me, it feels so present. Like it still feels like it just happened. So that pain doesn't go away. Do, people say that it lessens and I don't think that pain lessens. I think that you just learn how to live with it. And that's the hardest part because you're learning how to live with a loss that is so incredibly huge that like you'll never be the same again, you know? So like just reliving it is really hard because you do, you relive it the day that your loved one passed away. You relive that day. You relive every second of that day. And that's like the hardest part for me. And my none of my family lives near me, so it's really hard to um, be alone on that, on days like yesterday. So, okay, so now I'm gonna go in with these two shades. I'm just gonna, no. I'm gonna go in with these two shades right here. So I'm gonna just deepen up the crease with these. I just mix them together. And those are Hair On Chick and Fly By Night. So I just tap into them both very lightly. And then I just add them right here. But I still struggle with my sister's passing. Like I, I really do, I struggle and it doesn't get easier. It just, you learn to live with it, which sucks. So I don't like to go too deep. Like I like to make it darker, but I don't want to go too deep because it will look patchy. So I don't, I don't know if you guys remember, but I have a garden. My husband for Mother's Day built me raised garden beds. Every year I have, um, every year I have a garden but I've kind of given up on my garden because I have groundhogs that eat it 
So this year I was really excited because um, we changed where the garden was, like the location, and there were raised garden beds. So I was really excited. I'm like, yeah, I can have my garden again. And it went really well for the first month. It was great for the first month. I was so excited. Like I was like, this is awesome. My garden looked beautiful. And then the groundhogs found out where it was. And those little stinkers ate all my zucchini and then ate all of my cantaloupe and they just destroyed it. And I was so sad. And as so many people are like, just rehome them. You can't, you can't rehome um, groundhogs because the mama groundhog has been on our property for years. And they say that they like have a really hard time rehome, like going to a new place and they can die. And I don't want to have a groundhog's death on my conscience. So my garden's just done and destroyed, which makes me sad because I love to garden. It's like one of my favorite things to do in the summer. Every Mother's Day, I start my garden. And every Mother's Day, I know it's going to just be destroyed, but I still do it. All right, so now I'm just going to take the shades that I was using, put them underneath my eyes. I love adding eyeshadow underneath of my, I love adding eyeshadow on the bottom lash line because if you have any like wrinkles, it covers them up. Okay, so now I'm gonna take another small little brush, fluffy brush, I gotta find one, something like this. This is the Vasanti Contour Eyeshadow, and I'm gonna take that light shade that I started with, and I'm going to put it underneath my brow. Just to kind of brighten that up just a little. See? I know it looks crazy. I know I look crazy. Now I'm gonna take a flat brush, just any flat brush. It doesn't matter what doesn't matter what flat brush it is. Anyone. This is the Morphe M107-2. Just a flat little brush, and I'm gonna use a shimmer. I'm gonna use a few shimmers. So I'm gonna use Ariel right here and then I'm gonna go on top of it with this one and this one is Gander and I like to Put some on this brush because these are weird. These shadows are really weird. They're like you should use your finger But I hate using my fingers. So I Just take a bunch of it and then I use any setting spray it doesn't matter what the setting spray is any setting spray This is the Avene thermal spring water literally water in a bottle and Now I'm gonna put my shimmers on So I just put shimmer on like that and then make sure it's all spread out nice and neat and even. I have been watching Grey's Anatomy over again. This is the second time I've watched the, all the seasons and my gosh, that show, so good. I did get a question about mascara and it says, for the life of me, this is from Karen, for the life of me, I can't find a good mascara. All of these expensive ones from subscription boxes and they all clump my lashes together. Don't add length, nothing. What is your favorite mascara and can I see it on please? Yes, you can see it on and I have a few of them. But let me just fix my under eye real quick. So for a precise eyeliner, I like to use either the Tart Tartiste eyeliner right here. This is a felt tip and it has a regular smudger and I mean a regular pencil or the Clarins graphic ink liner. This one is super small so it gives you more control and this one is longer. So I'll start off with the longest. And I just lightly tap it so that I don't add too much. 
So then, now we're gonna do mascara. I like using 100 different mascaras. My favorite mascara to use is the Thrive Cosmetics um, mascara, it's a liquid lash extensions. I like to use this because it's a tubular mascara, so it's super easy to come off but I don't like to use this by itself. So what I'll first do is I'll coat my lashes with the Thrive Cosmetic lashes, I mean mascara. Okay, so they're coated and I'll use this for my bottom lash line and only my bottom lash line. I won't use anything else on my bottom lash line. Then I'll go in with another mascara. It doesn't matter which one it is because they all pretty much work the same. This time I'm gonna use the Black Magic Mascara by Ico London. And I'm just going to go over the Thrive Cosmetics because I feel like using the Thrive Cosmetics mascara underneath any other mascara helps be able to take the mascara off really nicely. It will still come off tubular, so you're not pulling on your lashes. And if you get mascara on your eye, your eyeshadow look, just leave it. Do not touch it until it's dry. And then you can just flick it off. Um, and then I'm going to go in with, I'm going to try the Fenty, that new Fenty one that I got in that Sephora one, the fat and fat and whatever it is, fat and skinny. I don't know. Just see how it works because I don't know. Mm, it's all right. I tell you guys I use four different mascaras, I really do. And the last mascara that I'm going to use on my upper lash lashes is the Bad, the Bad Girl Bang Mascara. It's a very skinny, long mascara wand, but this is a great comb through mascara. So this is basically, I'm only using this to comb through my mascara. So I go like this and I comb through any lumps, clumps, lumps, so it looks like this. And while you're combing through the mascara, it adds length. So not only are you adding length, I mean, not only are you getting the clumps out, but you are adding length to your lashes as well. And that's what I do for my lashes. Now for the bottom lashes, I'm just gonna take the Thrive Cosmetics mascara and I'm just going to do a light coat because I don't want it to flake. Okay, so there's my mascara. So that's what I do for my mascara. I always start with the Thrive and then I go in with other, any other mascara and it all pretty much works the same. Okay, next question. Um, what kind of CBD do you like and what's your favorite right now eyeshadow palette? Okay, so my favorite C CBD right now is the Jupiter CBD. I love this. It works really great for my inflammation and my anxiety. I take this religiously every morning and every night and I, I can swear to you guys, the difference in my skin, my psoriasis is, I can't even tell you. Like it's, it's so different that I feel like it's like a miracle. I still get flare-ups right before my period. The week before my period, I get a flare-up, but this calms my flare-up down so much that I'm not getting that like itchy welts of psoriasis, you know what I mean? That covers my entire body. It keeps it at a low. So I'm still getting a flare-up, but it's not that bad. But this is really good. This is a great clean CBD, and I've just been really liking it a, a lot. I mean, I, I love this CBD, this CBD. I love it, love it, love it, love it. They have a whole bunch of milligrams, 13, 15, 9, 50, 4, 50, 2, 50. You can get any milligram, low, high that you want, and I swear by it. Like, I wouldn't tell you guys that I saw a difference in my skin because I am such a skeptic when it comes to anything that has to go with my skin. Like, nothing works for my skin besides a steroid cream, and that doesn't take it away. Um, but I really believe this is helping, like, truly. Okay, so now that my eye makeup is done. Um, okay, just Anne. She says, how do you say couch? Do you say it couch or couch? <laughs> Anne says couch. Like she'll be like, I'm like, what are you doing? She'll be like, I'm just laying down on the couch watching TV. Couch. 
Like she says it through her nose and I laugh. Every single time I hear her say it, it makes me laugh so hard. It's not a Jersey thing. Saying kionch is not a Jersey thing. I refuse to believe it. <laughs> She's so funny. Okay, and the last question, question is, is YouTube your only job? What other jobs have you had in the past? But the truth is right now I'm just, I am a mom. I'm gonna use bronzer. I'm gonna use this bronzer. This is the Physician's Formula Radiant Bronzing Powder. I got this like years ago. Um, I am, I'm a mom. So I'm a stay at home mom. I do all the mom stuff, you know, but right now I also do YouTube. Now, when I started YouTube, I didn't want it to be a career, you know, like I didn't start it and say like, I'm going to do YouTube and it's going to be my job. I actually didn't know you could make money. Um, I only knew you could make money once I started like watching people and following people and hearing them talk about being monetized. And that's when I realized that you could make money. It took me a long time to get monetized. And I still, I don't make like a living off of YouTube. I don't make a living at all off YouTube. Um, I, what I make pays for what I buy. Um, so it's always a very weird question, but because, because I am a stay at home mom, I feel like I have to like sell myself. Like I'm a stay at home mom, but you know, but there's nothing wrong with being a stay, staying at home mom. If you have the ability to stay at home with your kids, then I think that's great. If you have to work a full-time job and be a, a parent, like you're superwoman. Like I truly, truly believe that. I worked, um, I taught, <laughs> I know it's really weird to think like I taught, but I did, um, for six years. And, um, then I worked as front desk at a hotel then I worked at a daycare. Then I worked at my own house and I started my own daycare. And then I had Dahlia. And then after I had Dahlia, I stayed home with her for a year and I got, I got pregnant with Scarlett. And then after I got pregnant with Scarlett, I started working nights at a hotel. And I worked nights at a hotel for uh, like two years. And then, um, I quit because working, working nights as a mom to like two young kids, you literally feel like you're missing their whole entire like baby years. And I did, I missed my kids' baby years. It was really hard. And then I quit working at the hotel and stayed home and I have the ability to stay home. And I'm very, very grateful for that. We had a really rough time financially for a really long time. We lost everything our cars, our house, all that when the recession hit. So we struggled and I'm very, very thankful that I'm in, we're in the position that I can stay home with my kids. I feel very lucky. Okay, so now I'm gonna do blush. I've been doing my blush a little bit differently lately. So I'm gonna use the ColourPop Interstellar Blush and I'm going to brush it on my cheeks. I'm just kidding. I'm not really hitting it that hard. I mean, I'm hitting it hard, but not. It's very, very, very pressed. And I'm going to go like this. I'm going to start here and bring it down like a swooping motion. Like a this. And then start here, swoop it down. Just like that. Then tap a little bit and pinch it like this. And go like that. Not enough that people are gonna say, wow, you have blush on your face, on your nose. Not enough, just enough to give it like a cute little pop. Okay, then I'm going to do a highlight. I thought maybe I'd try the floss that we got in our Allure. Um, so I like, I've been liking highlight brushes like this. This is the, um, SL Miss Glam SG62. I don't know how this works, if this is like a... Okay, so this is a weird, one of those weird highlighters that you should probably use your finger, but I hate using my fingers. So I'm just gonna keep dabbing in there and sweep it on my cheeks. Can you see it? I don't really see it, but okay. 
and dab a little bit more. Oh, there we go. I can see it. Bring it up. Bring it up. Like that. And then because I have a purple look, I'm going to grab the Too Faced right here. This is the Berries and Bubbly. And I'm going to dip into this highlight right here. And I'm going to wet my brush because I want to. And I'm just going to dab it. like that because it is a very bright highlight look at that like that and then sometimes I like to bring it down just a little bit like this to give myself a little bit of a glowy look but I do have an oily t-zone so my glowy can look oily and then put a little here and then I like to bring it down my nose just kind of like that. And if I feel like I want a little bit too much, I'll tap it in. Just like that. Then I go back into blush, which I'll be using this one, the Hourglass. It's a glowy blush. It is the Ambient Diffused Heat. And I tap it in. And I go like this. I don't want my highlight to be too highlighty, so I'll go over my highlight sometimes. And then I like to bring my blush up here. Just like that. And my face is done, guys. My face is done. It's, I'm like Manny. Back in the brows are filled. Back in the brows are filled. Back in the brows are filled. Okay. What the heck is in my... I just got a highlighter in my hair. Big ass blob of highlight. Okay. Now we're gonna do lips. And I figured I would use a new one, but I decided not to because I didn't feel like it. So I'm gonna use some of my color, my ultra blotted color pop, pop, color pop lipsticks. I love these so much. And I'm gonna mix all three of these together. This is the, well, maybe not. Maybe I'll just go, I'm gonna mix these two together. This one is the ringleader and this is soda pop. These are so comfy guys, probably the best best lipsticks I've ever used. And then I'm going to line my lips with the, where are you at? This one. This is the um, Pop Beauty Pout on Point Lip Liner. And this is just a nude lip liner. I'm just going to line my lips with it. So now that I lined my lips with a shade that does not look anything like these, I am going to put this on. I don't need to actually use a different color. I'm just going to stay with this one because I want to. And like I said, if you overlined your lips, good for you. You look great. You look beautiful. All right, guys. So that was my get ready with me. I know I didn't really talk very much about anything interesting, but I thought I haven't done one of these in a really long time. So why not? All right, guys, that is it for today. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Sorry I haven't done a get ready with me in super long. Um, I just haven't, but I really like these videos. It's nice to just sit down and just either chat or not chat or just talk about nothing instead of like always something box related. If you want to see more of these, let me know in the comments below. I hope all of you guys are having a great day. I'll make sure to link everything I used in my description box. Hopefully I remember. And I love you guys so, so much. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye.